Hi, this is Andrew Aversa with Impact Soundworks, and today I'll be showing exactly how to make a great sounding lead part from scratch using Shreddage 3 Hydra. We've shown examples on this channel about mocking up convincing leads, but here I'm going to be showing it from the very beginning, starting with a blank piano roll to a finished result. Now, fair warning, I'm not a great keyboardist, uh, and in fact, most of the time I write notes with the mouse in the piano roll because my playing abilities have sort of atrophied for lack of practice. But even if you're like me and you're not a great keyboardist, uh, it's still a good idea to do your first pass uh, playing it in live if you can. Even if I flub it and I don't get all the nuance I want and I miss some notes and timing, it's usually still faster this way than clicking in all the notes and modifying them later. So when it comes to leads, uh, this is my preferred workflow. So with that, here we go. This is a recreation of a tune from the game Chrono Trigger called Corridors of Time. Oh, and we can't forget, I'm using Shreddage Amp XTC for the lead tone. Uh, a little rough. Uh, I missed a couple things. My slides didn't come out right. I messed up the pitch bends a little bit, but it's not a terrible place to start. Uh, this is like a realistic starting point, I think, if you're not a superstar keyboardist, but you're also not a beginner. Now, I'm going to compress about 10 minutes or so of boring editing into a montage before I explain what I did. Now, if you'd like to watch the real-time editing process with all the warts and starts and stops, I've linked that in the description below. As this montage is going on, I'm going to explain what I'm doing and then we'll play the specific examples. My thought process is to look for places that don't have enough expression with that initial performance and then do some of the following. Add pitch bends uh, going up to the note, adding vibrato, which I usually perform manually with the pitch slider, adding slides down to the end of certain notes, switching some sustain notes to palm mutes to kind of dirty up the playing. Adjusting the note timing in a few places, uh, maybe adding a pinch harmonic here and there, and adjusting the note on velocity so that we get rakes when we want them at the top of the velocity range and just regular sustains when we don't want that. So now let's hear it all the way through with these changes. Taking a closer look, I'm going to identify certain parts that I think really add a lot to your lead sequencing and editing. In this section, I have palm mutes for the first couple notes, then I use a whole note pitch bend, some vibrato, and then a slide at the end. The palm mutes are really effective, in my opinion, and often underused by people. Real guitarists, you know, they don't have a perfect attack every single note. And by using a palm mute or like a half mute, that can sort of simulate not quite getting the note 100% perfectly. Also, you might notice that I really like to do manual vibrato. If you have a complete control keyboard, uh, the first iteration of them, their pitch slider is really great for this because you can just sort of tap uh, to get those pitch spikes. But honestly, a pitch wheel or whatever sort of pitch controller you have can give you that same effect. 
Now I've been using this slide down technique for about 10 years now, and the way to do it is pretty simple. You wanna make sure your slide articulation is set up on the low velocities. So this means moving the mutes up in the velocity range. Here's what that looks like in the articulations tab. Then when you overlap two notes, the second one is at low velocity, so you get a slide. But rather than hanging on the destination note and letting the full slide play, we use a short note. So it just sounds like we're sliding down the neck. This is a really common technique used by guitarists and this is an easy way to do it. You'll hear this more throughout the track. Here's a similar section with the same idea, different notes. If you look at the pitch bend data, it does sound great when we bend up to a note, and then start bending down as the note ends. It just adds more expression overall. There's also some hammer on and pull off uh, happening. And then the final note has a great rake to it, uh, sort of for a dramatic effect, just adding more attack time, which combined with the pitch bend gives it a lot of emphasis. This part at the end uses a lot of these techniques. Again, palm mutes sometimes instead of sustains gives it a little bit more dirtiness. Uh, there are three short slides to break up the playing. Uh, I threw a pinch squeal in just for fun. There's not really any rules for that. I just thought it sounded good there. And then there are some bend ups, including a big one at the end, uh, along with manual vibrato. Uh, one reason I like to bend up is because my observation is that that is generally how pitch bends are done. I'm not actually a guitarist myself, but if you observe just how they usually bend notes, it's up in pitch. And there you have it, how to go from nothing at all to a pretty decent lead part performed with Shredders 3 Hydra. You could spend even more time tweaking uh, things like slight adjustments to note timing, but in terms of the ratio of time spent to results, these techniques are great ones to learn and master. So doing your playthrough first, getting something in the ballpark of where you want the notes, along with some basic uh, pitch technique, and manually adding more bends and possibly more vibrato in certain parts where you want emphasis, swapping in palm mutes and adjusting velocities to get the right articulation, sliding down at the end of notes, and just general timing tweaks here and there so things aren't always landing on the grid. So you might quantize after you record stuff, but if you do that, then you might want to manually adjust timing afterwards. Otherwise, it's gonna sound uh, a little bit mechanical. Anyway, let us know in the comments what other sequencing, recording, or editing tips you'd like to see. This has been Andrew Aversa, and I'll see you in the next one.